There's a strange texture that clings to many of Germany's mid-war tanks. A rippled, ridged crust pressed into the armour like drying plaster. At first glance, it looks decorative, almost artistic, but it wasn't. This was Zimmerit, a chemical skin created to stop a terrifying new weapon. Magnetic mines that could turn even the thickest armour into molten scrap. In this episode, we uncover why Germany coated its tanks in paste, how it worked, who developed it, why it vanished almost overnight in 1944, and whether it ever truly saved a single tank. By 1942, German engineers had produced a weapon that even their own tankers feared. A hand-placed shaped charge mine fitted with powerful magnets. It could penetrate up to about 140mm of armour in Allied tests, but to use it, a soldier had to get dangerously close. In training films, troops sprinted towards tanks, slapped the charge onto steel and dived for cover as the jet of molten metal cut through the hull. It was brutal and effective, and it terrified crews. German planners realised that if they could build such a weapon, so could their enemies. The thought of Allied infantry copying or capturing magnetic mines haunted their operations staff. Zimmerit was born from that fear. What came next was an engineering solution so strange that Allied scientists later struggled to believe it worked. Zimmerit was not armour in the conventional sense. It didn't stop shells or shrapnel. Instead, it relied on physics. Magnetic force weakens rapidly with distance, move a magnet a few millimetres away from steel, and its grip starts to collapse. Zimmerit created that invisible gap. Chemically, it was a paste of polyvinyl acetate binder filled with barium sulphate and zinc sulphide mixed with wood flour and pigment. Spread about 6 millimetres thick, then hardened by heat, it formed a tough, non-magnetic layer. Workers combed or stamped it into patterns, ridges, waves or waffles, to maximise the surface area while saving weight. A Tiger One needed roughly 200 kilograms of the material, a Panzer IV about 100. Once cured, the coating stopped magnetic charges from sticking reliably to steel. But who actually invented this strange armour skin? And why did the German army trust chemistry to save its tanks? Zimmerit emerged in 1943 under the direction of the Heeres Waffenamt, working with chemists from the Zimmerwerks, whose name the paste would carry. Tests proved that it adhered well to armour, resisted chipping and withstood the heat and vibration that the tank would go through. By August 1943, the army approved it for factory use. Application became part of the production at key plants building the Panther, Panzer IV and Tiger I, while other facilities received instructions to add it during overhaul. Crews watched as new machines left assembly lines coated in thick grey paste, later cured by blowtorch or oven, and finished in camouflage paint. Yet the way Zimmerit appeared, and then disappeared, tells us far more about Germany's collapsing war economy than it at first seems. From August 1943 until the order to halt in September 1944, Zimmerit became a familiar sight. It covered Panthers, Panzer IVs, Tiger Is, early Tiger Is, Stug Threes, and Jagdpanzer IVs. Factories used different tools, giving each type a signature texture. Long combed ridges on MAN built Panthers, waffle stamps on Alket Stugs, and layered striations on Henschel Tigers. The coating focused on areas reachable by infantry, hull sides, the glacis plate and casemate fronts, open topped or thin skinned vehicles like the Marder or Vespa were rarely treated. Field repairs often use uncoated panels, leaving many late war machines patchy or uneven. But just as Zimmerit reached peak production, it vanished, and for decades historians debated why. In September 1944, the German High Command abruptly ordered factories and field workshops to stop applying Zimmerit. The reason was alarming. Reports claimed the coating could ignite when hit by enemy fire. Stories spread of tanks burning after tracer impacts. Testing could not immediately disprove the tales, and in a strained military bureaucracy, rumours travelled faster than evidence. Post-war Allied examinations by the British Intelligent Objectives Subcommittee and the School of Tank Technology proved that fully cured Zimmerit did not ignite. Only uncured paste, still containing solvent, could burn if exposed to flame, a risk heightened when factories rushed vehicles to the front. But even if the fire stories were false, another, deeper reason doomed Zimmerit. The battlefield itself had changed. By late 1944, infantry no longer needed to run up to a tank to kill it. They carried rocket-launched heat weapons. The American Bazooka, the German Panzerschreck, and the disposable Panzerfaust were capable of destroying armour from tens of metres away. 
Zimmer its entire purpose to defeat magnetic contact charges was now obsolete. Meanwhile, German factories faced relentless bombing, shortages and frantic output schedules. Zimmerit added many hours of labour and extra materials to each tank, time Germany could no longer afford. When the September halt order arrived, no one resisted. By October, new tanks rolled out bare-skinned, their once familiar ridges gone. But before it disappeared, how well did Zimmerit actually perform where it mattered? In combat. Against its intended weapon, Zimmerit worked perfectly. Captured tests by both British and American technicians confirmed that magnetic mines could not cling reliably to coated surfaces. The magnets slid off the hardened paste. The problem was that, by 1944, magnetic charges were rarely used. Allied armies never fielded them operationally, and German units had largely dropped their magnetic mines because it demanded suicidal proximity. Zimmerit had solved a threat that had already faded. Still, in close quarters fighting, city battles on the Eastern Front or in Italy, it could make the difference between survival and destruction buying seconds that saved crews. Yet, beyond its battlefield value, Zimmerit symbolised the wider shift in German engineering during the war's final years. Zimmerit embodied a distinctly German philosophy of wartime design. Precise, technical, and narrowly focused. It was an elegant engineering fix for a very small tactical problem a problem soon eclipsed by rockets and high-explosive anti-tank shells. Its cancellation marked more than the end of a product. It reflected Germany's transition from meticulous innovation to sheer survival. Factories that once experimented with chemical coatings were now racing simply to deliver functioning tanks. Zimmerit's brief life thus stands as a milestone in that decline. Ingenuity meeting exhaustion. Even so, the story didn't end in 1944. It continued in Allied laboratories and post-war museums. When Allied forces captured Panthers and Tigers in 1945, they examined the strange coating with fascination. British scientists at 21st Army Group Laboratories removed samples, measured composition, and recorded its properties. Their report described non-magnetic, anti-adhesive plaster for armoured vehicles, concluding it was well made but unnecessary for future warfare. Allied nations briefly experimented with similar coatings but never adopted them. By the post-war era, magnetic anti-tank mines were a relic. Today, Zimmer remains a subject of study. Model builders recreate its patterns, restorers analyse its chemistry, historians debate its relevance. At places like the Tank Museum, original vehicles still carry their hardened, cracked coatings, physical reminders of how fear and ingenuity shaped design decisions on the edge of defeat. Behind every layer of paste lies something deeper, a glimpse into the mindset of men fighting both an enemy and their own anxieties. Zimmerit was as much psychological armour as physical. It came from anxiety, the dread of an unseen soldier attaching death directly to a tank's hull. For German crews, a freshly coated panther or tiger offered reassurance. It was tangible evidence that someone, somewhere, was thinking about their survival. In a war fought by machines, Zimmerit was a reminder that fear could still shape design. The engineers who created it built more than a coating, they built confidence. And, in that sense, Zimmerit achieved something that statistics cannot measure. Zimmerit served for barely a year, yet it remains one of the most distinctive features of German armour. Its rippled surface tells of a time when chemistry met fear, and fear met ingenuity. Today, when visitors run their hands across the crusted hull of a tiger or stug preserved in a museum, they touch more than aged steel. They touch the residue of wartime innovation, a material memory of how small solutions once carried enormous hopes. Zimmerit did not win the war, nor did it alter its course, but it endures as a reminder that in total war, even a few millimetres of paste can reveal the depth of human imagination and of human fear.